The chief executives of five major tech companies testified before Congress, Meta, X, TikTok, Snapchat and Discord, faced tough questions on their efforts to combat online child sexual exploitation. Members of the Senate Judiciary Committee grilled the leaders while they examined the social media company's broader impact on children's safety and mental health. Efforts to regulate social media continued to ramp up across the U.S. amid concerns from some parents that social media platforms do not do enough to keep kids safe. The charge on the social media companies had failed repeatedly to protect minors. Listen in to how the tech CEOs asserted that they have been taking steps to protect children on the social media platforms. I hope we can have a substantive discussion today that drives improvements across the industry, including legislation that delivers what parents say they want, a clear system for age verification and control over what apps their kids are using. Three out of four parents want app store age verification, and four out of five want parental approval of whatever, uh, whenever teens download apps. We support this. Parents should have the final say on what apps are appropriate for their children and shouldn't have to upload their ID every time. That's what app stores are for. We also support setting industry standards on age-appropriate content and limiting signals for advertising to teens to age and location and not behavior. We want America to lead in this solution. X commends the Senate for passing the Report Act, and we support the SHIELD Act. It is time for a federal standard to criminalize the sharing of non-consensual intimate material. The steps that we're taking to protect teens are a critical part of our larger trust and safety work as we continue our voluntary and unprecedented efforts to build a safe and secure data environment for U.S. users, ensuring that our platform remains free from outside manipulation and implementing safeguards uh, on our content recommendation and moderation tools. We encourage parents to use the device level parental controls on iPhone and Android. We use them in our own household, and my wife, wife approves every app that our 13-year-old downloads. During the hearing, the Judiciary Committee's Democratic Chairman cited statistics from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, report stated financial sextortion in which a predator tricks a minor into sending explicit photos and videos had skyrocketed last year. As per the report, over 100,000 child sexual abuse material was reported in 2023. While the U.S. Senate grilling over youth content remains underway, Meta Annex, ahead of their testimony, announced new measures seeking to satisfy any political pushback. Standard to criminalize the sharing of non-US users, ensuring that our platform remains free from outside that people under the age of Let's now cross over to Washington, D.C., where the hearings are currently ongoing. As we speak, the chief executives of five major tech companies are testifying before Congress. Meta, X, TikTok, Snapchat and Discord are facing tough questions on their efforts to combat online child sexual exploitation at the United States Senate Judiciary Committee hearing. Life worse for Let's just listen in. Teenage girls, you increase center, anxiety and says. depression. That's what it says. And you're here testifying to us in public that there's no link. You've been doing this for years. For there's years, you've been coming in public and testifying under oath that there's absolutely no link. Your product is wonderful. The science is nascent. Full speed ahead. While internally, you know full well your product is a disaster for teenagers. Senator, and yet you keep true. right on doing what you're doing. Right? That's not true. That's not true. Let me let me let me show you some other but facts I, mean, you, I know you, that you're you familiar carry, you with. I, well, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's, that's not a question. That's, that's, that's not, not a question. Internal... Those are facts, Mr. Zuckerberg. That's, that's not, not a question. That's, those aren't facts. Here, let me show you some more facts. Here are some here's some information from a whistleblower who came before the Senate, testified under oath in public. He worked for you, the senior executive. Here's what he showed he found when he studied your products. So, for example, this is girls between the ages of 13 and 15 years old. 37% of them reported that they had been exposed to nudity on the platform, unwanted, in the last seven days. 24% said 
that they had experienced unwanted sexual advances they'd been propositioned in the last seven days. 17% said they had encountered self-harm content pushed at them in the last seven days. Now, I know you're familiar with these stats because he sent you an email where he lined it all out. I mean, we've got a copy of it right here. All right, so the, that is the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing where the chief executives of the five major tech companies are testifying before Congress. Meta, X, TikTok, Snapchat, and Discord are facing tough questions on their efforts to combat online child sexual exploitation at the United States Senate Judiciary Committee hearing. Let's now talk to our correspondent, Susan Tehrani, who's, who's now joining us live from New York. New York. Good to see you, Susan. Uh, heated debates, heated arguments at the Congress um, over this, um, this case. What do we know so far about uh, the hearings? Yeah, as you saw your, uh, and our viewers saw and you mentioned yourself in the introduction, this is a very tense hearing. It's also very concerning considering the fact that it's not only about children, child exploitation and pornography, but it's also about, uh, you know, what happens after and bullying as well. Uh, the hearing started with Senator Lindsey Graham uh, saying basically to Mark Zuckerberg that he has blood on his hand because a fellow politician from South Carolina, his son committed suicide because of bullying uh, on one of these platforms of Meta, whether it was Facebook or Instagram. And then they continued to receive harassment even after his 17-year-old son died. Uh, exploiting them and asking them for money uh, and saying that they would post nude pictures of his deceased son. So you can see how far, you know, deep this goes, uh, how trenching it is. And this back and forth that you saw is uh, is something that we anticipated and expected. But I think ultimately the main question is then what happens? Because these executives have come on Capitol Hill. They testified before. And, and you know, there is this understanding that finally, some kind of legislation may be able to be passed to address some of these issues. Susan, what are some of the concerns that uh, these representatives or the senators are raising about this issue? So they're concerned basically not only about uh, child pornography, but also about uh, what happens uh, when uh, girls, teens, and notably because there have been reports one after the other, where they have uh, been exposed to eating disorder, nudity, and uh, issues that re reflected on their mental health. And then Susan, also there's Susan, the issue sorry to of cut you, apps, short. you know, at what age and what... Susan, sorry to cut you short. Let's just go back to Washington, D.C. I understand there's some rockers or some drama happening between Mark Zuckerberg and the senators. Let's just listen in. Will you commit to compensating the victims? Will you set up a compensation fund Senator, with your money? I think these are these are with your money. Senator, these are complicated. Yes, that, no, that, that's not a complicated and, question, and though. Senator, that's a yes or no. Will you set up a victims' compensation fund with your money, the money you made on these families sitting behind you? Yes or no? Senator, I don't think that that's uh, my job. Is to sounds make sure like a no. Good tools. My, my sounds job like is a no. To make sure that we... your job is to be responsible for what your company has done. You've made billions of dollars on the people sitting behind them. Are you here? You've done nothing to help them. You've done nothing to compensate them. You've done nothing to put it right. You could do so here today, and you should. You should, Mr. Zuckerberg. Before my time expires, Mr. Chu, let me just ask you. Your platform. Why should your platform not be banned in the United States of America? You are owned by a Chinese communist company or a company based in China. The editor-in-chief of your parent company is a Communist Party secretary. Your company has been surveilling Americans for years. According to leaked audio from more than 80 internal TikTok meetings, China-based employees of your company have repeatedly accessed non-public data of United States citizens. Your company has tracked journalists improperly gaining access to their IP addresses, user data, in an attempt to identify whether they're writing negative stories about you. 
Why should your, your platform is basically an espionage arm for the Chinese Communist Party? Why should you not be banned in the United States of America? Senator, I disagree with your characterization. Many of what you have said, we have explained in a lot of detail. TikTok is, is used by 170 million Americans. I know, and every love. single one of those Americans are in danger from the fact that you track their keystrokes, you track their app usage, you track their location data, and we know that all of that information can be accessed by Chinese employees who are subject to the diktats of the Chinese Communist Party. That, that why, not, why should you not be banned in this, in this country? Uh, Senator, that is not accurate. A, a lot of what you describe we collect, we don't. And it is 100% accurate. Do you deny that repeatedly Americans' data has been accessed by ByteDance employees in China? Uh, we built a project that either cost us billions of dollars to stop that. And we have made a lot of progress. And it I hasn't think. been stopped, according to the Wall Street Journal report from just yesterday. Even now, ByteDance workers, without going through official channels, have access to the private information of American citizens. I'm quoting from the article. Private information of American citizens, including their birth date, their IP address, and more. That's now. Senator, as we know, the media doesn't always get it right. What, what we have... What we have uh, but the Chinese what, Communist Party does? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that we have, been, we have spent billions of dollars to build this project. It's rigorous, it's robust, it's unprecedented, and I'm proud of the work that the 2,000 employees are doing to protect the data. It's, it, but it's not, it's not protected. That's the problem, Mr. Chu. It's not protected at all. It's subject to Communist Chinese Party inspection and review. Your app, unlike anybody else sitting here, and, and heaven knows I've got problems with everybody here, but your app, unlike any of those, is subject to the control and inspection of a foreign hostile government that has actively trying to track the information of whereabouts of every American that they get their hands on. Your app ought to be banned in the United States of America for the security of this country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Hirono. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as we've heard, children face all sorts of dangers when they use social media, from mental health harms to sexual exploitation, even trafficking. Sex trafficking is a serious problem in my home state of Hawaii, especially for Native Hawaiian victims. That social media platforms are being used to facilitate this trafficking, as uh, well as uh, the creation and distortion, distribution of C-scam is deeply concerning, but it's happening. For example, several years ago, a military police officer stationed in Hawaii was sentenced to 15 years in prison for producing C-scam as part of his online exploitation of a minor female. He began communicating with this 12-year-old girl through Instagram. He then used Snapchat to send her sexually explicit photos and to solicit such photos from her. He later used these photos to blackmail her. And just last month, the FBI arrested a neo-Nazi cult leader in Hawaii who lured victims to his Discord server. He used that server to share images of extremely disturbing child sex sexual abuse material interspersed with neo-Nazi imagery. Members of his child exploitation and hate group are also present on Instagram, Snapchat, X, and TikTok, all of which they use to recruit potential members and victims. In many cases, including the ones I just mentioned, your companies played a role in helping law enforcement investigate these offenders. But by the time of the investigation, so much damage had already been done. The searing is about how to keep children safe online. And we've listened to all of your testimony to seemingly uh, impressive safeguards for young users. You try to limit the time that they spend. You require parental consent. You have all of these tools. Yet trafficking and exploitation of minors online and on your platforms continues to be rampant. Nearly all of your companies make your money through advertising, specifically by selling the attention of your users. Your product is your users. As a Meta product designer wrote in an email, quote, young ones are the best ones. You want to bring people to your service young and early, end quote. In other words, hook them early. Research published last month by Harvard School of Public Health estimates that SNAP makes an astounding 41% of its revenues by addressing to users under 18. 
With TikTok, it's 35%. Seven of the 10 largest Discord servers attracting many paying users are for games used primarily by teens, by children. All this is to say that social media companies, yours and others, make money by attracting kids to your platforms. But ensuring safety doesn't make money, it costs money. If you are going to continue to attract kids to your platforms, you have an obligation to ensure they are safe on their platforms because the current situation is untenable. That is why we're having this hearing. But to ensure safety for our children, that costs money. So this is live in Washington, D.C., at the Congress, where the chief executives of five major tech companies are testifying before Congress. Meta, X, TikTok, Snapchat, and Discord are facing tough questions on their efforts to combat online child sexual exploitation at the United States Senate hearing or Senate Judiciary Committee hearing. Susan Tehrani is our correspondent from New York. And Susan, before we cut live to Washington, D.C., there was an argument between Senator Tom Cotton and Mark Zuckerberg and also TikTok's Chu. He argues that uh, Mark Zuckerberg has been there before. Nothing has been implemented ever since 2020. And now he's back there at the Senate hearing and they don't see anything that will change. What do you think about uh, this argument from the senators? Yeah, that's, that's the concerning issue that we were talking about earlier, where they come and go, come back and say, we'll get back to you with some data and whatnot. They testify. And you can see that these executives, just their mannerism, they're a lot more comfortable than they were the first time a few mm -hmm. years ago when they appeared in front of Congress, uh, in front of a Senate hearing. And the reason for that is because ultimately they see that they're untouchable. Nothing really has happened to them. Even TikTok, which uh, has been banned on government devices, uh, still, you know, the majority of Americans continue to use them. And a lot of Americans even use it uh, from age 18 to 35 to get their news. So ultimately, you know, when they say that we're doing everything we can, the question remains whether or not they are doing everything they can. And then ultimately, again, you know, is this something that is for the viewer to see that, you know, the Senate is doing its job and, and they go back and everything is just back to the same old, same old, or is some kind of legislation or some kind of measures, at least by these organizations and, and these institutions, social media companies is really going to uh, take place and come out of this. Susan, uh, just before I let you go, quick one. What are the American or the American parents' expectations with this hearing? Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.